All right, we're here at my tiny worm bin, and the last time we were in here, we did a sugary feeding. We had both marshmallows and we had some dates. I cut some up and I put a whole date in here, and we put that all on this side over here. And previous to that, we had fed macaroni and cheese on this side. So let's go ahead and dive in and see how everything is going. And at the same time, see if we're gonna have a lot of mites in here or not. I didn't know if sugar attracts mites or that kind of thing. I know that like a pasta does or bread certainly attracts mites. And I've heard that green leafy stuff also does. And sure enough, I'm seeing lots of mites down in here. So we're gonna go ahead and dig in and see if we can see any dates at all. Actually, let's go to the marshmallow side, which was right here in the front. I'm thinking that as soon as they got wet, they probably dissolved. But right away, I am seeing lots of worms. They are right down there. So they certainly like this sugary side. And we just gave a little bit of bedding. We didn't put a whole lot in because this bin is 134 days old. And it probably only has about a month and a half, maybe two months more of having to be fed before we harvest its castings. And right here is almost like a little worm ball. I'm not sure what they're after in the center here, but let's see. They just might be around a bunch of food or not at all, but they are definitely all over each other right there. Little mini worm ball. Let's keep digging in and seeing if we find anything else. All right, I think that was it for the marshmallow side. So pretty good showing there. Now let's go ahead and see if there's any dates left. And I think I feel something solid right here. Solid and wet. Oh my gosh, this is completely solid. And I'm just gonna hold it here because I think there are a bunch of mites. Wow, right there. Okay, so. I think what I've found is kind of mites central here. I'm just gonna kind of peel this apart. There's some worms in here, but there is just an enormous amount of mites. Look at that, I'll hold still again. So I would say that sugar does attract mites and dates are particularly sugary. And the worms really haven't gone to them too much. This is nine days and mostly what I'm seeing on them is mites. So lesson learned here, if you already have a little bit of a mite bloom, you might want to look out for adding too much sugary stuff. This is actually surprising. I did not think that they would attract the mites this much and that the worms would not eat the dates that well. So very interesting. I wonder if I had a bin that didn't have too many mites if the worms would have attacked it more. But yeah, there are just lots of mites all over here. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a technique that I use in order to kind of get rid of mites if they are in a big bloom like this. In general, mites are not bad for a bin, especially a bigger bin, but a tiny bin like this, the worms just don't have too much area to get away from them. So I'm gonna go ahead and bait those out and I'll show you how I do that. So let's just kind of leave this over here, I guess, in this area. And then we'll go, go on over to the other area. Yeah, there's just a lot of mites there. Okay, so not as many worms over here where the dates were. A bunch where the marshmallows were. And we're just going to go on to the other side and see how things are going. I'm not too worried about spreading the mites throughout the bin because they're already throughout the bin. And once I bait them, I will get hundreds of thousands of them out. So let's come over here and see how the rest of the bin is doing. I'm going to dig in the middle. It's feeling very moist also. So that's another thing that mites like is moisture. And they like conditions that are a little more acidic than the worms. So having a bunch of mites also indicates that your bin may be going a little acidic. So yeah, they're doing good. Lots of big, healthy worms. You can see a clitellum of an adult right there. So... Happy worms right here through the middle. And let's see on this side where we had fed macaroni and cheese. And, you know, I went from a pasta to a sugary food 
So that does make sense that we're getting this kind of a bloom of mites over the last two to three weeks. So yeah, look, look at that. Lots of worms over here on this side. Lots of worms. So they are avoiding this corner over here where the dates were. So let me go ahead and air the rest of this out, and then we will set up the feeding zone on this side. So first thing I'm going to do is just put very little shredded cardboard down here, nowhere near as much as I usually do because I'm getting a little bit closer and closer to harvest. And then we're going to put in a light feeding of some carrot peels and little pieces of carrots. I know the worms like these and they will go through them pretty quick. Even the solid pieces of carrot, they go through pretty quick. So that is going to be their food. And if we come in here in about a week and we still see dates over here covered in mites, I'm just going to pull those dates out. If there's a food that's not doing well for your bin, don't be afraid to pull it out. Just get the worms off it, put those back in, but we'll see how that goes in about a week. So there's our feeding. I'm going to add a little bit of coffee grounds. These are spent coffee grounds. And you'll notice I did not add any pulverized oats, which I've been adding for the last five months because we are out. But I am working on a new worm chow, and I'm going to test some ingredients in my vermi hut. So that'll be coming up in a different video. But this is just pulverized eggshells, and it helps them digest. They use it for grit, and their gizzards helps them grind up their food so they can absorb it. All right, so now I'm just going to bury this food up, and then on the top, I'm going to put my little bait for the mites. And what I use for bait for mites is a little piece of bread that I just soak completely in water. And the key here is you take the bread that's soaked in water, you just lay it right here on the top, and within about two to three hours, you just take the whole piece of bread and any layers of clumps of mite right off, throw it in the sink, rinse it down, and then replace the bread. You can do that four or five times in two to three hours and you will get so many mites out of your bin and really help to reduce their population. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do right now. All right, so here's one piece. We'll put it right there and this is just absolutely soaked. And what you'll find is you may see some mites around the edges and on the top, but when you lift it out, there will just be hundreds of thousands of mites on the bottom. And then you just pull it out, put it in the sink and get rid of it. So we'll go ahead and add our paper on top and that will complete this feeding. And we'll see how many mites we can get out and get rid of from this bin. So I hope you all are doing well. I hope your worm bins are doing well and I hope everybody has a great day. So happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.